Welcome to Bible study. I'm extremely excited about today's topic, which is hearing from God. So grab your Bible and something to write with and something to write on, and let's get started. Let's start in prayer. Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you that you are right here, right now, God, who is alive and loving us and wanting us to have everything that Christ died for us to have. And so, Father, right now, I pray blessings upon all the ears hearing this message, Lord, that you would uh, quicken their hearts to receive. And I pray revelation knowledge for each one of us, Father, as we search your scriptures for the truth which sets us free. We thank you, Father. We love you. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So today's topic is hearing from God. And this topic actually came... Uh, from, of course, personal experience. And I have heard so many people say things like, I don't hear from God, or God's not speaking to me, or just various other comments to that effect that actually are not true statements. And I personally went through a season about six months ago, and this is uh, where this message was born, was through my own personal struggle where I felt like I was not able to hear from God. So let's dig into the scriptures and see what God has to say about that. And so I'm going to give you an acronym to help you um, remember these truths, and that word is BLAST, B -L -A -S -T. T. So as you listen to the teachings, see if you can pick out what B and L, A, S, T stand for, and these will blast you off into your journey of hearing from God. The first point, I have three points today in our Bible study, and the first point is that God speaks to you and he wants you to hear him. God speaks to you and he wants you to hear him. So let's look at Ezekiel 3.10. And as always, I encourage you to look these verses up in multiple versions of the Bible and see what Holy Spirit will reveal to you. My verses are coming out of New King James and ESV. So Ezekiel 3.10 says, take into your heart all my words, which I will speak to you and listen closely. This verse clearly says, I will speak to you. Well, what that says to me is God is speaking. And the second part of it says, and listen closely. Oftentimes, the reason we don't hear from God is because we're not really listening. How often do you come before the Father without a list of things that you need or want? How often do you just come into that quiet place where you're just listening? Well, turn to Luke 10, verses 41 and 42. And we'll talk about this story that many of you are probably familiar with. And it's about Martha and Mary. And this verse really popped for me. One day as I was re reading it, and we know that Martha was busy and she was preparing lots of things and busy in the kitchen doing things. And a lot of us can get very busy doing a lot of things. But listen to what Jesus says to, in Luke 10, verses 41 and 42. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. The part of this that popped out for me was the one thing is needed. Jesus said, one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part. 
And if you know the story, Mary chose to sit at Jesus' feet. And what do you think she was doing there? Well, she was listening. Because Jesus was always teaching. He went about teaching and preaching and healing. But if she was sitting at his feet, she was listening. And so when we look at Ezekiel 3.10, it says, listen closely. And then in Luke 10, 41 and 42, Jesus says, Mary chose the one thing that is necessary. It's listening. So that's encouraging because first you have to believe that God is speaking to you or you won't listen for his voice. So believe that he is speaking. And listen for his words. Now, when we talk about listening for his words, we need to get a couple of other scriptures here tied together with this because how do we listen? Well, John 4 verse 24 says God is a spirit. And John 3 6 says that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So if we put those two together, God is a spirit, and that which is spirit is spirit, then the way that God is speaking to you is not going to be through your physical ears. Let's look at John 6, 63 to clarify this even a little further. So John 6, 63 says, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. So if we put those three verses together, John 4, 24, God is a spirit. John 3, 6, that which is spirit is spirit. And John 6, 63, the words I speak to you are spirit and they are life. So what does that tell us? It tells us that God speaks to us spirit to spirit. So when you're listening, you have to listen with spiritual ears. Your ears of faith. You have to believe that he is speaking to you. That's what faith is. Faith believes the things that we can't see and the things that we can't hear with our audible, as in an audible voice. Now, sometimes, we, you know, God speaks in miraculous ways, but most of the time it is through an inner witness. He speaks to your heart. The Bible says that the spirit bears witness with our spirit. And so you know it in the core of your being, in your spirit. You hear him with spiritual ears. When you think about the Pharisees, they heard Jesus talking. They heard the things he said physically with their ears, but they didn't hear him. They didn't hear him in their heart. They didn't hear him in their spirit. Now, why? Well, because they were spiritually dead. So first of all, to hear from God, you have to be born again. You have to be spiritually alive. And that's what being born again is. It's being born in the spirit. Like John 3, 6 says, that which is born of flesh is flesh. Well, when I was born out of my mother's womb, I was flesh. I was born into a sinful world with a sinful nature but when I was 29 years old and I got saved, I got born again, I was born spiritually and my spirit became alive and the Holy Spirit came to live inside of me and we became one. The Bible says I was sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And so that's super exciting because now I have spiritual hearing. And we'll talk about that in just a couple minutes. But I want to show you one more verse about uh, this point number one that is God 
is speaking to you and he wants you to hear him. Now look into James chapter 1, verse 25. James chapter 1, verse 25 says, But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. Well, let's take that apart a little bit. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty. Liberty means freedom. There is law from the Old Testament, but that's not the law of liberty. The perfect law of liberty is the law, or, or, I'm sorry, is the, the, is the grace message that Jesus brought. It's the law of freedom. It is for freedom that Christ set you free. And so when we look into the Bible, especially the New Testament, the perfect law of liberty is where Jesus comes in, takes all of the sin of the world upon himself and sets us free from condemnation and judgment. And in James, it says, but he who looks into this perfect law of liberty and continues in it. You have to continue in the word because the Bible says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. That's John 8 verse 32. And you have to continue in it and know it. Know it intimately. Let it sink into your heart. Let it sink in so that it becomes your reality, not just head knowledge, but the truth inside of your heart. And James 1.25 says, But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer. Well, how can you look into a book but be a hearer? Well, that's because the word of God is is alive and it is spirit. John 6, 63 says, the words that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. So the word of God, the written word of God will speak to you spirit to spirit because the word is spirit and it is life and it will bring life to you. It's super exciting. The end of that verse, James 1.25, says, it, He who is not a forgetful hearer, so you take that word into your spirit, but a doer of the work. And we can talk about those good works that God prepared for us to do um, in another Bible study. But this verse, version says, This one will be blessed in what he does. So when we look into the word of God, which is the perfect law that sets us free from condemnation, free from sin, free from guilt, free from shame, we will be blessed in what we do because we will know God and we will discover, we'll cut to that verse coming up, we'll discover the perfect plan he has for us and we'll be blessed in what we do. Point number two that I'd like to make is that you do hear his voice. See, when I was having that struggle and I was, I was confessing with my mouth, I don't hear you, God. I don't hear you, God. And that's not truth. That is not truth. And God did not agree with me. The verses we just read are pretty clear that God is speaking. He is speaking. And I needed to believe that he was speaking to me and I needed to listen to what he was saying. But the next part of this is I needed to believe that I do hear him. And I've got some verses here that will help you to agree with that. John 8, 47 says, He who is of God hears God's voice. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. Well, my friends, if you are saved, you are of God. And John 8, 47 says it just this clear. 
He who is of God hears God's words. It's truth. It's scripture. So I had to start getting my my mind to agree with what the word said. You can't let your experiences trump the word of God. You have to hold the word of God above your experiences. So I didn't think I was hearing from God, but the word says, he who is of God hears God's words. So that is what I started to confess out of my mouth because the power of life and death is in my words. And that's what I started to believe in my heart because in my heart lives Jesus, the Holy Spirit. And Jesus, the Holy Spirit, agrees with the word of God, which is the truth, which sets me free. So I decided that I would believe what God says. And I started confessing with my mouth, I hear God. The word says, John 8, 47, he who is of God hears God's word. And I wasn't going to disagree with God anymore because, see, I was agreeing with the devil who was telling me, you don't hear anything. And that's a lie because all the devil can do is lie. So that is a huge part. After you believe it, you have to be like Mary and listen, sitting at his feet, listen and say, I hear you, God. I hear you, God. Now, John 10, 3 and 4 is going to help also convince you that you do hear his voice. John 10, verses 3 and 4 say, To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings them out, his own sheep, when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. My friend, if you're a believer, you know his voice. You know his voice. It's a still, small voice that comes to the pit of your being, your, your spirit, and you know it in your knower when it's him, and it comes with peace because in his presence, there's peace and joy and hope. And so John 10, 3, 4 says, the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. He goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice. That's scripture. That's truth. So I also had to start confessing that truth. I know your voice, Lord. I know your voice. I hear you. I know your voice. So I started agreeing with the word who is Jesus, who is God, instead of listening to the lies of the devil. John 10, 27 says it this way. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Again, friends, it's very clear in the word. My sheep hear my voice. You've got to make a choice today. Are you going to agree with the lies of the devil? Or are you going to agree with the word of God? And I know you're going to agree with the word of God. That's why you're watching this video. That's why you're seeking. Seek and you shall find. And so I am really excited for you today because you're going to have serious breakthrough in this area. 2 Peter 1, 3. One of my favorite verses. I have many favorites, but this, is, this one's fabulous. 2 Peter 1, 3 says this. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Friends, your spiritual ability to hear has been given to you by God. 2 Peter 1.3 says his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. In the previous verses, it says... The sheep hear the shepherd's voice. In Ezekiel, we read, My words which I will speak to you, listen closely. 
Mary sitting at Jesus' feet. All of the verses are saying to us, God speaks. And he's telling us to listen. Well, he's not going to tell us to do something that we can't do. And then in this 2 Peter 1.3, he says, I've given you the ability to hear me. His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Well, friends, to live a godly life, we need to hear from God. So he gave us the perfect ability to hear him. You're not hard of hearing spiritually. You don't, you, you don't have a problem. You don't need hearing aids. You have the Holy Spirit in you and you have the promises of God. His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Listen, you don't have a hearing problem. I didn't have a hearing problem. I had a knowledge problem. I was believing the lies of the devil and thinking, I can't hear God. But when I dug into the word, the perfect law of liberty, and I heard what it said in my spirit, it said, I hear it from God. He is speaking. I know his voice and I hear his voice. I gained that knowledge and revelation that I needed that set me free in this area. Mark 7, 16 says, if anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. Well, friends, you have ears to hear. We just talked about that. God gave you those ears to hear. And James 1, 17 says, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. That means he gave you a perfect gift of hearing. Perfect gift. And Mark 7, 16 again says, if anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. I mentioned before that the Pharisees couldn't hear in their spirit. Why? Well, because it says, we read this up in verse, um, where was that one? John 8, 47, he who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. The Pharisees had not given their hearts to God. They had given their hearts to religion and rules. And they had so misconstrued the Father's heart that they missed it. And they couldn't hear. They were spiritually deaf because of their own understanding of what they thought the Messiah should be, instead of truly opening their hearts and letting God speak to them and letting God change the way they think, they were closed off. And so they couldn't hear. But you, my friend, if you're a believer in Jesus, you have perfect hearing from God. Perfect ability given by him to hear his voice and he's speaking. So you need to believe it and you need to listen and you need to sit at his feet and you will hear his voice. My third point today is not only is he talking to you and wants you to hear and not only do you hear, but my third point is when you hear it in your heart, it changes your mind and changes your life. Proverbs 23, 7 says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. If you think you can't hear God, you won't. If you think God doesn't heal anymore, you won't get healed. If you think God is way up there and not here in your heart, you'll never experience the truth. Because he says that he abides in you and you abide in him and he'll never leave you or forsake you. So Proverbs 23, 7 says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. If you have any problem, friends, it's a thinking problem. It's a knowledge problem. But check this out in Hebrews 4, 12. This is exciting. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit 
and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. This word is alive, and it has the power to change the way you think. And it will change the way you think if you allow it to come into your heart. And it will change the way you live. Because as you think in your heart, so are you. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. But this verse says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Abide in that. Let it inundate your heart and your mind with truth. And in Romans 12 too, Paul tells us, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Friends, when you hear from the Lord, when you look into that word and you hear in your spirit, spirit to spirit, the, the word is alive and he's going to speak to you spirit to spirit. And it's going to change your mind. Romans 12, 2 says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Let him transform your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. But again, saints, you've got to believe that he's speaking. You've got to listen. John 15, 5 says, I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Saints, putting all these scriptures together, he gave you the perfect ability to hear him. Without him, you can't hear him. So if you're not his child, you won't hear. But if you are his child, you will hear. And as you abide in him, which means remain stay. How do you abide in him? Well, he's the word. In the beginning was the word and the word was God. The word was with God and the word was God. Look into the perfect law of liberty. That's the word of God and listen to what he's saying. You will bear much fruit. John eight thirty one and 32 says, then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, these were believers, listen to this. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Friends, if you have not been set free in this area, I encourage you. I encourage you to blast off. B is believe. L, listen. A, abide. S, sit at his feet. And T is thanks. First Thessalonians 5.18, give thanks in all things. Thank him. For this perfect ability that he has given you to hear his voice. Sit and thank him that he's speaking. Thank him that you hear him. Thank him that he never leaves you or forsakes you. Oh, saints, this is so encouraging. Back to John 8, 31 and 32. I encourage you because Jesus said here, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Not every believer is a disciple. Don't be just a convert. Don't just have your ticket to heaven. Be a disciple. Because if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Father, I thank you so much for this time. I thank you for your word that you've poured forth with power. And I thank you that you have pricked hearts and minds, Father God. And I just pray exponential growth to these seeds that have been planted and watered today in Jesus' mighty name. 
Thanks for sharing the word with me today and listening. Please visit our website at www.thefishfarm.org. Um, give us some feedback and even suggest more teaching topics. We'd love for you to become a partner with us. God is doing amazing things here in Michigan and all over the world through this ministry. So have a blessed, blessed day in Jesus' name. Oh, one more thing. Stay in the word. The word works. God bless you.